Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, April 8th, regularly scheduled Valley View School Board meeting. I would ask that you silence your phones, rise, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I need to address this. Um, a couple weeks ago, we lost a high school student, Renee Lugo, in an auto accident, and I think it was today or recently, uh, Courtney Marie Schoolcraft, who was one of our employers, passed away after a long battle with cancer. Our hearts and prayers go out to those families. Uh, there's no good time to lose a family member, but these are two young people way too soon. So thank you. Mr. Harris, if you would. Thank you. Uh, moving down the agenda, board affirmation statement. Ms. Sutherland. Our mission is to empower every learner to be college career and life ready and to develop, grow, and achieve as a productive citizen. Thank you. Uh, as you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Keith Wood joined the Board of Education as the new superintendent. Uh, we welcome Keith. He's been in our district for many, many years. He was the assistant or the principal at uh, Brooks Middle School. He's been named the National Association Award of Secondary School Principals, the Woodview or Middle School Principal of the Year by the IE, the Illinois State Board of Education. Uh, just a whole lot of things. He's a really good guy, and I think you guys are going to be very impressed with his abilities. And I would like to turn it over to Dr. Keith Wood. Welcome, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. I just have a uh, few um, words to Board President Quigley, Vice President Zach, members of the Board of Education, and to our educational community as a whole. It has been an honor and privilege serving the Valley View School District and the Bolingbrook community for the last 13 years in my former capacity as principal of Brooks Middle School. It has also been my honor to be part of outstanding service organizations like Heart Haven Outreach, the Bolingbrook Lions Club, and the Valley View Educational Enrichment Foundation. As a resident, employee, <clears throat> and active member of the community, I've had the unique opportunity to initiate, build, and maintain relationships with many outstanding community members over the better part of two decades. These experiences have helped me develop a heightened sense of pride in serving this community that I call home. As a new superintendent, I look forward to extending connections across Valley View and beyond by building partnerships with larger network of organizations in order to provide the highest quality of instruction, positive and supportive school environments, and connection to the community for every learner that we serve. I look forward to enhanced partnerships with our families and staff who deserve nothing less than world-class experiences from VVSD. I remember 13 years ago when I accepted the principalship at Brooks. At that time, I stated that I have both the will and the capacity to make a difference. Tonight, I reaffirm that commitment as I assume the role of superintendent of schools. My success as an educator would not have been possible without support of family, specifically my mom and dad, my lovely, uh, loving wife, Angela, along with a multitude of friends and the exceptional educators who I've had the privilege of working with over the years. Our VVSD staff is exceptional as is the support provided by our community. Our collective work and the commitment of our community will make the difference for every learner, every day, as we move forward. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Wood. Moving down the agenda, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The ayes have it. Student staff recognition, Illinois Basketball Coaches Association. We have, I let's see, the Allstate from Bolingbrook and Allstate from Romeoville High School. Come on, oh, you're already here, come on down. Hello, good evening, uh, members of the school board, members of senior leadership, Valley View staff and community. My name is Pat Woods, I'm the assistant principal for athletics at Bolingbrook High School. It's great to see such a great crowd out tonight to recognize the accomplishment of our students. Uh, I'm here specifically to speak to uh, our boys basketball program and three of our players who earned all-state status. That is senior DJ Strong, junior JT Pettigrew, and freshman Davion Thompson. Coach Brost is unable to attend tonight, so I have Coach Gamikia here to speak about the accomplishments of our boys. Excuse me. Good evening, Dr. Wood, members of the board, and fellow stakeholders. Um, Rob Rose, the head of our program, cannot be here tonight as he continues to grow the game of basketball and promote Bolingbrook community during his uh, commitments to the National Association of Basketball Coaches Conference and the USA Basketball Junior National Training Camp. So it is my privilege to present these members of the Bolingbrook uh, Boys Basketball Program here tonight. First one would be JT Pettigrew. Honorable. Honorable student 3.5 GPA, averaged 17 points, 11 rebounds per game, was MVP of the Decatur Turkey Tournament, first team all tournament Jack Tosh Holiday Classic, first team all conference SWSC, second team all state IBCA, second team all state media, formerly as the AP, first team Joliet Herald News. Illinois Hoots Prospect All-Junior Team and Illinois Hoot Prospects All-Defensive Team. JT Pettigrew. Uh, next, we have DJ Strong. Honor roll student with the cumulative 3.3 GPA, averaged 13 points a game, shot 48% from three points this season, first team all conference, all state IBCA, first team Joliet Herald News, McDonald's All-American nominee, DJ Strong. <laughs> DJ. Davion Thompson, honor roll student with a 3.7 GPA, averaged 19 points per game, five rebounds per game, shot 59% from two and 45% from three for the season. First team All-State, IBCA, All-State Media, formerly the AP, top 20 player, Chicago Sun-Times, first team All-Tournament at the Decatur Turkey Tournament, first team All-Tournament, Jack Tosh Holiday Classic, first team All-Conference, SWSC, First team, Joliet Herald News, Illinois uh, Hoops Prospect All-Freshman Team, and Illinois Hoops Prospect Freshman of the Year, Davion Thompson. <laughs> Mr. Kinder. Good evening, Dr. Wood, uh, Dr. Nash, members of the board, members of the audience. So, such a lovely sight to see so many people here this evening. And members of our viewing community, my name is Derek Kinder, very proud principal at Romeoville High School. And before I call up our, uh, our head basketball coach to recognize our two All-State basketball players, I definitely have to extend a thank you to, on behalf from our, all of our students, families, parents, and students, kids, everything that Shelly Casey has, has been able to organize, communicate with, and uh, kind of get together to come to these board meetings. This is probably the last time that I get to speak um, during this school year, and at the end of this school year, Shelly Casey will be retiring. So on behalf of Romeoville High School and all of our students and families, thank you, Shelly.
You've been a true asset to all of us that come here throughout the evenings. Thank you. So without further ado, our head boys basketball coach, Mr. Mark Howard. Thank you, Superintendent Wood, um, Board of Education, and all fellow stakeholders. Um, I'm excited to talk about these young men here um, that represent RHS boys basketball. Um, before I talk about them individually, first and foremost, I want to say that I'm super proud of these guys because they are awesome um, represent, representatives of Romeoville High School in our school community. They're role models in our Opportunity Matters program with the Village of Romeoville. And they've been excellent students, um, putting their education first and doing a great job academically. Um, but my first, my first athlete is DJ Porter Jr. Um, DJ Porter, DJ Porter Jr. is second in scoring at RHS, averaging 12.8 points a game. He led us in rebounds at 6.4 points a game. One of the things about DJ is he's a kid that can guard every position on the floor, regardless. If it's one through five, he can guard it. He guarded the best player for every team we played. Um, against Joliet West, he had a game where he held um, um, Mr. McNair there to, what, two points during the game. He, McNair shot um, probably less than 20% that night, and that was a, a huge accomplishment for DJ on that game there. Um, but just to talk about his accomplishments this season, DJ um, was first team all tournament at the WJOL Thanksgiving tournament. He was Joliet Herald News All Area. Um, he was first team SBC conference. Um, he was honorable mention um, IBCA um, All State. And uh, DJ, thank you for contribution. Our point guard, E.J. Mosley, led the team at 13.4 points a game, led the team in assists at 4.7 points a game, was second in steals at two steals a game, averaged three rebounds a game, was totally a floor general on the court, a coach on the floor communicating to his teammates. He accomplished in his, in his junior season the 1,000-point mark. He reached the 1,000-point club in his career as a scorer and climbing with one more year to go. Um, DJ, I mean, I'm sorry, EJ was all tournament first team WJOL, all tournament first team State Farm Holiday Tournament, Joliet Herald News all tournament team, SBC all first team all conference, and IBCA all honorable mention. And one of the things that EJ achieved is against the state runner up downstate in the semifinal game at the Bloomington State Farm Christmas Classic. He threw in 31 points against the runner-up in state. And we're excited for what EJ still has left to do at Romeoville. And next up is our staff spotlight video. Jackie Lyles, kindergarten. Oh. My, my mistake. <laughs> How about the Illinois, what do we have? Volleyball qualifiers for state. Here we go, John J. Lukansic. Yes. Good evening, President Quigley, members of the board, Superintendent Wood, senior leadership, and our sensational members of our Valley View committee, community. It is with great plight and honor that I stand before you this evening as the principal of Lukansic Middle School to recognize our girls varsity team. Not only is this group of students dynamic on the court, they exemplify what it means to be a flame. With a team cumulative grade point average of 3.6. 
I am so proud of each and every one of you for taking us to state for the very first time ever in JJL history. A huge thank you for all of our JJL families that are here. If you could please stand, I would love to recognize you. What a phenomenal group of families and friends that we had on us with on this journey for our girls team. A huge thank you to our coaches and our absolutely sensational athletic director, Coach B. For all of you that know Coach B, she lives and breathes volleyball. So to do this under her leadership as athletic director is a year we will all never forget. At this point, I would love to introduce our coaches, Miss Crowley, Miss O'Connor, and Miss Leoando. Hello. Um, first, I'm Coach Crowley, the varsity girls volleyball coach here at Lukansic. First, I would like to say thank you to my coaching staff, Coach O'Connor and Coach Liwando. They have been a big help this season. Um, and second of all, to all of our parents here that just stood up. You guys have supported these girls since they were in sixth grade fighting for these wins. And uh, I know these girls appreciate all of you. Um, let, next, I would like to say a big thank you to all of our girls here. We have a full 15 roster, which was very challenging, but very worth it. These girls fought hard all season to practices, games, conditioning, yelling at them to get on the line, and they never complained, so they really worked hard to accomplish this win. Um, for most of these girls, they have come up short in a regional championship, twice now so to be able to come in and pull a finish this is something not everybody gets to experience but I'm so grateful and thankful that these girls got to come up and fight all the way to state making six out of eight teams and they deserve it they fought hard till the end and I know they're going to do a great job next year in high school um, le next, I'd like to thank the school, Lukanzik, the staff, um, all of our managers, all the teachers that came out and supported us this season. I know the girls love seeing you guys at all of our games, and it's greatly appreciated. And especially another big thank you to Coach B. I have had the pleasure of being coached by her and now mentored by her, so to be able to still have her here and witness all of this, uh, has just been a complete honor. So thank you. Um, in congratulating the girls now, so first I'd like to congratulate Grace De Jesus, our middle blocker. That's for, that's for you. Smile and wave. Um, Malia Dillon. Lauren Frick. <laughs> Julia Furzon. <laughs> Lindsay Hurtado. <laughs> Shelby Johnson. <laughs> Talon Malak. Peyton Pacheco. <laughs> Isabel Petrizic. <laughs> no. <laughs> Michaela Ray. <laughs> Jimena Sanchez. <laughs> Gianna Thierry. 
Aubrey Westerfield. And Essence Williams. There's one more missing, Elise Rivera, who could not make it here tonight. Um, and we have not had our end of the year party. However, I would like to congratulate three very hardworking girls. First one being Grace De Jesus for being our most improved player this season. <laughs> Throughout her sixth and seventh grade year, she has made a great impact on her skills and her emotional control in the game and she is going to just improve from there. I'd like to congratulate Talon Malak, our little seventh grader, who received our Lukanzik Flame Award. She represents what a student athlete is all around to her teammates, to her classmates in the classroom, on the court, and in the building. And she is just a star student, both on the court and in the classroom. Lastly, I'd like to announce our most valuable player being Aubrey Westerfield. She has been our setter since sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade. She has worked extremely hard. She loves the sport. She loves her teammates. And she knows what it means for body and blood before the ball. So great job, ladies. Dr. Woods. I think the coach said smile and wave. They got the smile down really well. So at this time, it's my pleasure to um, announce the staff spotlight video, Jackie Lyles, kindergarten teacher at BJ Ward Elementary School. A um, little bit about Jackie prior to 2000. She was working as an accountant in banking and was very satisfied with her career path. However, the turn down in the US economy and the aftermath of the 9-11 terrorist attacks forced her employee, employer to close. She started substitute teaching in Valley, Valley View and eventually became a paraprofessional at the Early Childhood Center. Jackie became interested in teaching but couldn't take the time off from work and from getting paid so to go back to school um, and also student teach. That all changed when um, Valley View started a program that is now known as Elevate You and as Jackie says, the rest is history. As she nears completion of the, her first year as a full-time certified classroom teacher. Um, spotlight video, Jackie Lyles. Circle your tail. How many ones do you have left over? It's not, they're having trouble with it? Okay, I'll tell you what, why don't we move down the agenda, go to the treasurer's report. Mr. Renish, if you would, please. 6.1 is the schedule of bills. The schedule of bills for the month of April, we have six funds totaling bills payable of $3,525,347.61 for your approval. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Motion and second it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, a roll call vote, please. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Venegas? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Mr. Renich? In your packet, you have 6.2, the summary of investments for the month of April, along with 6.3, the state funding update, and 6.4, all schools trust act account activity. Uh, this is an informational agenda item. Anybody have any questions of Mr. Renich? 
Seeing none, hearing none, moving down the agenda. Are we ready up there yet? You'll let us know when you're ready. All right, consent agenda items, Dr. Woods. We are seeking your approval on 11 consent agenda items. 7.1, board meeting minutes, March 11th, 24. 7.2, special board meeting minutes, March 16, 24. 7.3, special board meeting minutes, March 22, 24. 7.4, executive session meeting minutes, March 11, 24. 7.5, trips for Bolingbrook and Romeoville High School. 7.6, resolution number 2427 for professional services agreement with Petrarca, Gleason, Boyle, and Izzo LLC for legal services for limited engagement. 7.7, .7, recommendation to extend related services contract with Easter Seals Joliet Region, Inc. 7.8, facility dog agreement at Bolingbrook High School. 7.9, student activity contract with Scholastic Books and Dr. James Mitchum Early Childhood Center. 7.10, student activity contract with Barksdale School Portraits and Dr. James Mitchum Early Childhood Center. And 7.10, 11, gifts to B.J. Ward Elementary School, Independence Elementary School, Oakville Elementary School, and Romeoville High School. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, a roll call vote would be in order. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Venegas? Yes. Member Sutherland? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Moving down the, we're still not going? Okay, moving down the agenda. Liaison reports, any and all from my right? Mr. Zach. Okay, we had a Wilco meeting a couple of weeks ago and the March 2024 student of the quarters came out. So Daniel Booker for his business logistics from Bolingbrook STEP program, Yamet Sosa, CNA Certified Nurse Assistant from Bolingbrook, Gabriel Area Computer Technology from Romeoville, Stephanie Franco, a medical assistant from Romeoville, Olivia Di Palaula, a veteran assistant year two from Romeoville, and Anthony Vegas, welding two from Bolingbrook. Congratulations to them for being, making on a quarter. Any from my left? Sutherland. Uh, just before spring break, um, directors Adam Herter and uh, Maria Burgess uh, met with myself and um, secretary uh, board member uh, Debbie Sikora on the learning and growth uh, committee for an update. Uh, went through some of the uh, scores and um, information that's uh, attributed to the math and reading and, um, made, and they had a nice discussion as to where we're at or where we're going next. So I thank them for inviting us to this, um, this informational meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Moving down, if there's no further liaison reports, moving down the agenda, audience participation. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to address the board this evening? Seeing none, hearing none, moving down the agenda. Action report, Ms. Nash, consolidation 10 through 10.6. Hey, Dr. Nash, that's me. Uh, action report 10.1 is the consolidated action report for certified and classified personnel. This evening we're seeking your approval on all items as presented. There was a change on page four, item number seven, um, with a building uh, switch at the, uh, that was just, uh, uh, presented to you, so we're asking uh, for approval on those items with that uh, adjustment made. So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Venegas? No. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. 10.2. 
Um, before we do that, I would like to uh, point out that on the Consolidated Action Report, we had four administrative appointments made, so I'd like to take a moment just to introduce those individuals before we move on the agenda, if I may. Um, first, I'll just introduce the uh, new assistant principals to our ranks, uh, Meg Morgenstern, if she could stand and wave to the audience. <laughs> Meg has been... Meg has been appointed as the new assistant principal at Brooks Middle School for the remainder of this year. And then Samantha Bowman, who is in the audience as well, I think she's over in that direction. <laughs> Samantha Bowman has been appointed as the new assistant principal at AVM, so congratulations to both of them. And then I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Patrick McGinnis, who has been um, appointed as the new principal at Brooks Middle School, if he would like to come down and share a couple remarks. Thank you, Dr. Nash. Um, board President Quigley, board members, Dr. Wood, and senior leadership. It is with immense gratitude that I stand before you today, deeply honored to accept the position of principal at Brooks Middle School. I want to express my sincere thanks to the Board of Education for entrusting me with this pivotal role. I am committed to upholding the standards of excellence at Brooks Middle School. I would also like to thank Dr. Wood. Your guidance and support has been invaluable. I am grateful for your mentorship and your faith in me. I look forward to our continued collaboration to steer our school and district towards even greater achievements and success. To the community of Brooks Middle School, I pledge my commitment to fostering open communication, transparency, and collaboration. Our partnership with families is paramount, and I am, in, excuse me, and I am going to work hard hand in hand with parents and guardians to ensure the development and well-being of our students. Furthermore, I am a firm believer in the power of servant leadership as principal. I am here to serve not only the students and families of Brooks, but also our exceptional staff. I am deeply honored to lead such talent and dedicated team. We will continue to reach for the stars daily in our pursuit of excellence, and I'm excited for our future. Lastly, but certainly not least, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to my wife, Julie, and our two wonderful children, Tegan and Madison. Your unwavering love, encouragement, and understanding has been instrumental in my journey, and I am profoundly grateful for your endless support. I want to thank everyone again, and I am truly excited to serve every learner every day. Thank you, Mr. McGinnis. And finally, I would like to introduce to the audience Dr. Teresa Polson, who has just been appointed as Assistant Superintendent for Educational Services. Dr. Polson. Good evening. Good evening, Superintendent Wood, President Quigley, members of the board, members of Cedar and leadership, members of the Valley View community, family, staff, and I think I see a couple students still with us this evening. One quality of myself that happens on good days that works for me, and a quality that sometimes work against me on some not so good days, is I show up as my authentic self. And I really wanted to show up as my authentic self this evening, but I knew it was a professional environment, so I kept it together. I wanted to run down this aisle like I was the next contestant on The Price is Right. <laughs> because, because I think about how they run to the stage when they get called um, to join on the stage, and they're truly filled with joy and excitement, and that is truly what comes to my heart. I am filled with joy and excitement. Along with that, I'm humbled, I'm honored and completely blessed to return home to my Valley View community, my own community, to serve you all as your next assistant superintendent. Though I've been gone on a little hiatus, I am honored to return and I will tell you that I have tapped in to the top-notch, high-caliber 
individuals across this entire district for the past two years. Yep, starting at the administration center, I think probably they can attest to that I've tapped into every single department at this point um, to leverage their knowledge, to bring to my current district that I'm serving. And then as I dove into the buildings, core content administrators at the high school I've tapped into, principals and assistant principals. In fact, today, I was just using some knowledge of a couple of our APs today. And perhaps the most important, those of you that do the work inside the classroom, outside the classroom, in the hallways, in the offices across the building, on the playground, on the school bus, that is where that magic happens. It's not playful worlds, it's real talk. That is truly what pushes our kids to be high caliber leaders that I have seen with my own eyes in my own community that Valley View produces. So I am beyond excited to serve shoulder to shoulder with each of you to learn about the work that I've missed as I've been watching on the sidelines the past two years, to learn from you, to grow from you, and together be stronger to push even further moving forward. So without further ado, I'm honored, I'm blessed. There's nothing else to say, let's, let's get to work. Thank you. Welcome home, Dr. Polson. Ms. Nash. Action report 10.2 is resolution number 2422, authorizing non-reemployment of first year probationary teacher. So moved. Second. We have a motion. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Venegas? No. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Action Report 10.3 is resolution number 2423, authorizing dis the dismissal of educational support personnel employees for reasons other than reduction in force. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Venegas? No. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Resolution, or I'm sorry, Action Report 10.4 is resolution number 2424 authorizing the notice of reduction of workforce. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Venegas? No. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Ms. Nash. Action Report 10.5 is resolution number 2425, authorizing notice of reduction of workforce of professional technical employees. Motion? So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Venegas? No. Member Sutherland? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. 10.6. Action Report 10.6 is resolution number 2426, authorizing the non reemployment of part time and temporary educational support personnel. So moved. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Venegas? No. President, uh, Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. And Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Oh, the video is ready. Woohoo! All right, let's roll it. Mr. Woods, if you'd like, or you already so did. You How many ones do you have left over? There you go. Jojo, circle your 10. How many ones do you have left? There you go, you got it. I was a bank teller, 18, working as a bank teller. In school, but just taking my gen ed classes. I was going to take the teaching path. At least I thought I was. I wasn't really sure at 18. 
So working as a bank teller, they're like, oh, if you go to school for business, we'll pay for it. So I ended up doing all my gen eds and then taking a bunch of business courses and I actually started to like it. And I'm like, oh, this is good money. I, got, I moved up in the corporate world, ended up leaving that bank, going to another bank. Then I ended up working in student loans as an accountant for student loans for a bank. And that's, that was my track, all business from the time I was 18 until mid-30s. 9-11 happened, my company went under, and it was kind of like, oh, what do you do now? I started subbing at the Early Childhood Center. And the principal at that time was Donna Nylander. She offered me a job, and I took the job, and the rest is history, I guess. I want to hear you. <laughs> Tell us how you made that last step from becoming a paraprofessional working at the Early Childhood Center to a full-time classroom teacher. I didn't think that I would be able to take off work and student teach. And then the district proposed something to me in 2022. Randomly called me over the summer and said, we're doing a pilot program with Lewis University. We're selecting a few pair pros. You've been one who selected because I already have a four year degree. And it's a one year program. You won't get your degree unless you want to continue, but you will get your license. I'm like, wait, what? I was shocked. So I'm like, of course I had to do it. And I did it, and one year program applied here, and that's what happened. These Hi. illustrations, they're, they're very, very pretty. Later, we're gonna do some illustrations with our book too. Yeah. I, I love you, Goosey. Uh, you are my big sister. What? <laughs> no, I am not. I am a goose. You, Lucy, are a dog. When I saw the curriculum, I'm like, Okay, I have to figure out a way for us to play all day and still meet the curriculum. So everything is a movement, everything is a song. If, if we're playing with toys, we get to play with them first. We count them and then we get to play with them. All of that is because of the Early Childhood Center, I have to honestly say. That experience there for over 15 years led me to understand how important play is and then seeing the curriculum here helped me understand how to incorporate that play into the curriculum. What change in your students from the beginning of the year until now gives you the most satisfaction? Seeing kids come in in August, not being able to read, and now I have readers. Everybody can read in the room. Everyone can read. Like, and I have some kids who our goal is to read at D. I have some kids who are already at F who couldn't read at all in August. It's the most amazing feeling to see. Something that I've done helped them learn to read. In August, we're required to ask each kid, BJ Ward has a requirement that you ask each kid, what's their hopes and dreams for the year? So I sat down with each kid and they got to tell me all of their hopes and dreams and everybody's different, how to write my name, how to write my friends' names. But the one that resonates with me the most is the one that says to read. That was her hopes and dreams. And she is the highest reader in the room. That's the most amazing feeling ever. When you see that, it kind of makes you happy that she lost her job. I hate to say that in a bad way, but it's good to have her aboard. Uh, moving down the agenda, where are we at here? I've been checking things off right and left. Oh, Mr. Renich, I believe. Early Childhood Center Edition contract. On uh, June 12, 2023, an information report was presented to the Board of uh, Education for construction of the early, uh, the new, uh, I'm sorry, new Early Childhood Center to be located at Oakview School property with the recommendation from administration. Uh, Valley View School District received an Early Childhood Construction Grant under the Rebuild Illinois program. The grant approved was the maximum amount of $10 million uh, to be used towards the construction of this project. The total pr projected estimate is to cost of around $19 million, which includes construction 
construction management, professional architect, engineering fees, and furniture. The project's expenditures are paid out of the capital projects fund, which is a restricted fund. With regards to construction costs, competitive bids were received through FH Passion, the district's construction manager. FH Passion reviewed the bids for the lowest responsible bidder for the scope of work. The combined cost of the work, including trade construction, construction management, bond insurance, and general conditions and delivery of the project is at a guaranteed maximum price of $17,016,250. So that guaranteed maximum price means that the construction manager is going to assume all the risk uh, for, the, uh, for the district. The administration is recommending that the Board of Education approve the amendment to the master contract for construction manager with F.A. Passion to perform the construction of their early childhood center at Oakview School, including trade construction, construction management, bond and insurance, general conditions for a project delivery for a guaranteed maximum price of $17,016,250. Is there a motion? I'll move. Second. second. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? It's good to see that that number came in a couple million dollars less. Than what we expected. That's fantastic. Uh, if we no further comments, roll call vote, please. Member Venegas? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Sutherland? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Dr. Woods, student discipline case. Yes, um, Board President. Quickly, before we move further into the agenda, I would like to offer another round of congratulations to our students and their families who are recognized here tonight. Um, your accomplishments um, mean a great deal to our school community, and we appreciate that. Thank you for coming out, and um, now will be a good time if you uh, care to um, head out. I know you guys have homework and other um, things to <laughs> attend to, so um, be safe on your way home. Okay. 12.1, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, we are seeking approval on action report item 12.1, student du discipline due process cases A through E as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Sutherland? Yes. Member Venegas? Member Baduras? Yes. Secretary Pro Tem Campbell? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. And President Quigley? Yes. Superintendent Information Reports, number 13. Okay, so doing double duty, speaking, slideshow. Usually Mr. McGinnis would help me out with this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go. We have a series of images that provide us with a snapshot of what's happening across the district. Um, at Pioneer Elementary recently hosted Illinois State Representative Natalie Manley, who read and discussed the importance of voting to first and second graders at Scott Elementary. This was the first day back from spring break in a kindergarten classroom where our littlest ones didn't waste any time getting busy, learning, and problem solving. There was a coffee shop reopening at the Secondary Transition Experience Program. It is newly remodeled and a student-led coffee shop experience where I may or may not have had more than my fair share of cookies during the relaunch. It was good to see the buzz of excitement on staff and student faces during the event. Transition planning, sir, oops, skip that one. At Irene King, there was an IAR parent night where I had the opportunity to see the pride the administrative team, staff, students, and parents have in their school and their academic achievements. We look forward to leveling up at King and across all schools during the IAR assessment window. Um, just a note about the BHS Mobile Food Pantry is offering, um, is offered the first Tuesday of each month in partnership with the Northern Illinois Food Bank and other community organizations. It is a tremendous support to folks across our community. And hot off the press, 
we were able to capture a few students from Lukanzik who were able to get a glimpse of the eclipse as it reached near totality in our area. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And in keeping with the theme of the spotlight video focus on Ms. Lyles, and I like to say um, not only just Ms. Lyles, but all of our kindergarten teachers who do just a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I have a reminder that this is kindergarten enrollment season and we are actively enrolling the graduating class, and are you ready for this, of 2037. <laughs> to be eligible to, to register, kindergarten students must be five on or before September 1st, 2024, and the family must live within VVSD school boundaries. Kindergarten is offered at all elementary schools. Please follow the link or contact the enrollment team at the Administrative Center if you have not already done so. And finally, there are a few um, upcoming dates to mark on your calendar. We have two early release dates, April 10th and April 24th, a board meeting on April 22nd, <laughs> and Friday, May 3rd is a teacher work day, no student attendance. That is the end of my report. Thirteen point two. I'm assuming that's Mr. Renich. That's correct. Uh, the print shop is looking to replace their production color copier as the current copier has reached its useful life. The current copier is four and a half years old, with over 22 million copies. Wow. The print district. Uh, uh, sorry, the printing the district's curriculum in-house is not only a financial savings, approximately fifty thousand dollars a year but also provides a better service to our schools. This is an informational report with the goal to bring a recommendation to the next Board of Education meeting. Keep going, unless people got questions on the copier. Sure, 13.3 is the Independence Elementary kitchen renovation. Independence Elementary School has the, one of the highest enrollments for K-5 serving 600 learners breakfast, lunch, and supper daily. Independence is just one of two schools without a walk-in freezer or refrigerator unit. The current school footprint does not allow for remodeling of the space within the building to fully address the deficiencies outlined above. By adding an exterior walk-in freezer refrigerator unit, we can maximize the interior square footage, provide greater dining space for our learners, accept uh, contactless deliveries from vendors and maximize the productivity of the independence team members. There's an informational report for your review. After we receive the bids, we will anticipate bringing a recommendation for an award at an upcoming board meeting. 13.4 um, is the audit um, RFP request for proposal. Uh, Evans, Marshall, and Peace has been uh, Valley View School District's auditor for approximately nine years. This year, the contract for services expired. As a result, the district decided to conduct a request for proposal for auditing services. Uh, on February 29, 2024, the district solicited eight independent certified public accounting firms licensed in the state of Illinois. Proposals were accepted until Friday, March 18th. As part of the process, a questionnaire was developed to be submitted by prospective firms. Additionally, a rubric was written to aid in assessing the firm's strength and weaknesses. The district is in process of reviewing these RFPs, request for proposals, for all those that submitted, which equated to three firms. The next steps will be conduct an in-person interview with the goal to bring a recommendation to the next Board of Education meeting. And finally, 13.5, uh, the 403B-457 program update. School um, employees can participate in a retirement plan that is called the 403B or 457B and is named for the section of the IRS revenue code that governs this benefit. Recently, the district underwent a review of these plans. The purpose of the review was to determine if the district was receiving the lowest cost and highest yield on its assets. Based on the review, it was determined that the district needed to modernize its plan. As part of the process, the district consolidated vendors going to six vendors down to two Approximately 80% of our current and former employees maintain their accounts with these two vendors. As a result of this review and change, the district employees should see a reduction in fees or savings of approximately 70%. A significant savings. Communication to all the employees will begin sometime uh, in the week uh, April 15th. 
information on the project has been shared periodically with the Finance Committee. There's no recommendation at this time. Sure. 13.6 um, Parent Square Universal Communication App proposal is an informational report. Um, we will, will be seeking your approval on at the next board meeting. It is for the purchase of Parent Square as a universal communication um, app platform to facilitate two way family engagement across all schools for the fiscal year 25 school year. Okay, maybe. Moving on the agenda, legal services report. No formal report tonight. Thank you. Association reports, Valley View Council. Good evening. Hello, Valley View Council. <laughs> First, I'd like to start by thanking a few special groups of our membership at this time. Uh, this time of year brings a lot of national days to thank many of the roles that make up the Valley View Council. So a special thanks to all of our school LMC directors, our paraprofessionals and nurses. Yes. who we have celebrated and honored specifically over the last week or so. We appreciate all the work that you all do and our staff and students are very fortunate to have the support of these roles. On a side note, before I get started here tonight, Dr. Nash has been sitting on this stage as the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resource since 2018. So when you address her or any woman in this district, do so with the proper credentials like you do every man around here, Mr. Quigley. Dr. Wood, I'd like to welcome you to your new role and personally let you know that you have my commitment to seeing that this union will continue to operate in good faith and work towards building a relationship with you to best serve the students and the members of the Valley View Council. With that said, I ask that you don't take the things I have to say here personally tonight. This is business when I step up here to speak. I speak as a union leader and that is a role I take very seriously. As you will get to know and see, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. And everything that I speak is truth. And I have always and always will have the best interests of my members and students who we serve here in this district at the forefront of my mind. Over the last few weeks, things have certainly changed around Valley View and I'm not gonna say for the better. Countless questions are still being raised, tears are still being shed and lots of uncomfortable feelings, anger and lots of unknown lingering through the halls all of which this board can be thanked for. As this board does in true fashion, I hear that you have begun to spin your own narrative in the communities that is absolutely false. So let's start there tonight. Because if this membership and community can count on one thing, it's for me telling you the truth and shooting it straight. So let's start by talking about our former and current superintendents. Superintendent Kinder was on her third year of a five-year contract that was her third contract that she had received from this board. She had more than two years left on her contract and this board chose to dismiss that contract for cause and march her out of here like she was a criminal. Because your narrative is that she used ESSER funds and snuck it past all of you to hire staff? Are you kidding me? If any of you actually read the bills that stated what ESSER funds could be used for, it was to hire additional staff to help support the academic and SEL struggles after coming out of a pandemic all of which staff was hired and approved by you. For months, you have been sitting here asking how we can afford these additions, what's gonna happen since we don't have those funds anymore, and the district presented you a budget with all of the appropriate shifts, and you all approved that too. If you didn't think that that budget was sufficient enough or didn't take those roles into account, then maybe you should be talking to our assistant superintendent of finance down there. Maybe you should be watching how money is shifted and moved around to certain schools and certain entities in our communities. That continues to show irresponsibility with the taxpayer dollar. Just in case you guys forgot, it's about the students. 
That's what this should all be used for. The salary and benefits that actually take care of, teach, love, and guide those students. So what Superintendent Kinder did use those funds to help support student needs was exactly what she should have used them for. But that wasn't good enough for you all. You chose to march a woman out of this district who started as a guest teacher in Valley View over 20 years ago and worked her way up the ranks without the help of any former mayor, politician, or community ties or titles. Unlike several of you that sit on this stage, including administration, Rachel Kinder had the respect of not only my members, but our community, past and current building leaders, former superintendents, including Dr. Mitchum, and among superintendents and countless other leaders across this state. The way in which this transition occurred paints a picture of dysfunctional leadership on behalf of this board. The truth is that she had one provision in her contract that she had not met yet, and that was moving her family to our community. One provision that I will tell you is not common in superintendent contracts among several districts around us. That cause is simply amazing to me seeing that our own school board president utilized private schools before BHS. Now talk about calling the kettle black. So our schools aren't good enough for school board members, but for our former superintendent still getting paid gets fired, or your mutual agreement, as you want to call it, because she didn't move her children here. Almost all of you on this stage don't even have a direct connection with any of our schools anymore. So what actually is your interest in these roles besides your own personal agendas, I ask? You don't take such actions as such and expect all the rest of us, including Dr. Wood, to clean up your mess. For what? To make a statement? Well, you certainly put Valley View on the map, and you have the whole damn state talking about how reckless you are. You couldn't have released Superintendent Kinder and allowed for a peaceful transition, a calm transition for this district, for not only the district, but for Brooks staff and Brooks students as well. The truth is you could have, you just chose to act reckless. A group of individuals who are charged with supporting stability for a district did the complete opposite. And now you have given this community lots to talk about. And if you ask me, they should be calling for a vote of no confidence for all of you who supported her departure like that. And look at this, guys. Not even a week into Dr. Wood's new role, he has handpicked a new assistant superintendent that is a close friend of his. Isn't that just amazing how that works? Four years, Superintendent Kinder sat up here with no assistant. And one week into your job, you have a new one. Just amazing, right? Now, I see quite a few administrators here tonight, probably to show support to Dr. Wood and now Dr. Paulson, and justifiably so. But if any of you are complacent with what happened to Superintendent Kinder, then you're just as bad as the rest of them up here. Many of you probably aren't even aware that the direction of this board was actually to cut administrative roles this year, or at least that's what board members have been feeding me. So if all of you were smart, you'd start paying attention to what's really going on around here instead of trying to get bonus points with your new bosses. Now let's talk numbers. Almost $70,000 is being paid out to Rachel Kinder for three months of service and work that she is not performing. Rachel, if you're watching or you happen to see this, I sure hope you're on a beach somewhere laughing at all this BS you don't have to deal with anymore. <laughs> A $70,000 salary would take a new teacher in our district 15 years of service, guys, to make. 15 years! <laughs> You're paying out Dr. Wood a prorated of amount of about $15,000 to his additional over already $160,000 salary, along with 25 vacation days that were not prorated, as shown in his agreement that he can use between now and the end of June, or has the opportunity to buy those days back at a per diem rate, which could equate to over 21,000 of additional dollars by the time of his departure next year. Actually, it could really amount to about $36,000 with a new set of 25 days for next year. 
So he very well could be departing Valley View next year with a salary of over $260,000 plus benefits when he leaves. Kudos to you, Dr. Wood. I sure would love to know how one can earn 50 vacation days in a 15 month period without any type of evaluation or review to justify that type of earnings. And I'm sure my members in the community would like to know how you all are justifying that too. You prorated four personal days, but not 25 vacation days. People around here have had enough of the good old boys mentality and actions that run through the veins of Valadir. Putting yes people in roles of leadership does one thing, shows weakness of those who are making the decisions. This community should be tired of the countless irrational decisions that this board continues to make, and I'll be hitting on quite a few more of them as I continue. Now you as a board have the duty to fulfill the superintendent role, and you did so within a matter of days. Dr. Wood, you should be so honored that you didn't even have to apply for this role. <laughs> now that certainly sends a message to all of us. One. This plan had been in the works for quite some time. Two, you handpicked an individual and you plotted all again this whole thing behind the backs of all of us, including former Superintendent Kinder, which is quite telling about the character of all of you. And three, just because you have the right to fulfill the role doesn't mean you should have filled it the way you did because it was slimy. It also sends a, member, a message to my membership that I guess we don't have to interview anymore for positions either, guys. Since the board and the district are just going to appoint people, I guess that means we should be given the same grace moving forward. We also got a new principal at Brooks who was approved here tonight as well. Not even a posting or an interview for that job. Every other principal in this audience had to interview and apply for a position. And this board recommends and approves that recommendation knowing that it wasn't even posted? I want to know how that one's even legal. <laughs> Physically responsible, right? The board is supposed to act on behalf of the community and taxpayers' money. I don't think you're going to find one taxpayer around here that's in favor with you paying out over $100,000 for a reckless transition alone. You think our communities can afford that type of misuse? We have an electric bus that one of you was so adamant about seeing us get here in Valley View and spend $250,000 on a piece of crap that continues to break down. A five-year-old bus that was converted to an electric bus that nobody even wants to drive around here and isn't even dependable. Good use of taxpayer dollars? I don't think so. Correct me, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. But up until recently, the board had not even seen or approved one building administrator's contract in this district for years, possibly even decades, besides the two high school principals. Not one. Some of you all have been sitting on this stage for more than a decade, and you as a board never thought to bring it up and keep an eye on how many administrators and how much they're getting paid in this district. Over 40 of them are in our buildings alone. The only ones who saw those contracts were those of you that sit on the finance committee, which is not four of you, which means that therefore it cannot be considered an approved action of the board because you don't get to act on behalf of the board unless you have four voting members present. You think that's physically responsible? I think not. Now I had to wait for months for my MOU for our retirees to get discussed and voted on. Months for reasons I won't disclose. But what we agreed to allows for savings in this district in the upwards of over $300,000 for a handful of individuals. But what does the board do? Give direction to the district to cut our coordinator days and get rid of everyone who was hired on ESSER funds. So you left the district scrambling, trying to figure out how to retain our actual FTEs. And the only way to do that was to cut days. Now you all have reversed that decision, and I am thankful for that, and I know our coordinators are too. But again, instability and dysfunction. I look to save the district over $300,000, and you look to cut $300,000 from our pockets. 
We have a board member who in the last few months alone has put in FOIA requests across this district that have accounted for over 30 hours of PR work for Mr. Blaney. Can you imagine how much that's gonna cost the taxpayers? I can't wait to see how much money is being spent on the attorney fees for them to go through 30 hours of FOIAs. If you want, all wanna know what's going on around here so bad, we're hiring if you didn't know. We need bus drivers, teachers, and LPAs. You wanna know what's going on? Get a job around here. While these figures that I throw out may seem small, and I know they're not small to any of us, but we are in no financial position to be blowing hundreds of thousands of dollars because a $1 million pay, guys, is a 1% more increase for all the rest of us. So all these additions and shifts are certainly adding up to my calculations. And all I can say is that we head back to the table to negotiate next year, folks, and I assure you, none of this will be forgotten about. You know what else won't be forgotten about come next spring during election season? How the members of Local 604 hold over 800 votes in our communities. We won't forget how this board walks into our buildings or shows up at events and continues to disrespect us in our work environment. Those of you that do take the time to pass through, you don't greet us. You don't shake our hands. You don't say thank you to us. You don't ask us how it's going. But instead, you march around and tell my members that you're our boss. No, folks, you are most certainly not any member of the Valley View Council's boss. We won't forget the harassment and intimidation that this board has repeatedly shown my members over the last year. We also won't forget those of you who sit up here silent either. Silence is deadly and silence is compliance. And if you walk out on this stage and you show compliance, we won't forget that either. My council is the only entity in our communities that has even held board forums so the community could actually see and hear from those that are running for these elected seats. So please also take this speech to, as a call to action for our community. We need a board that actually represents the diversity of our communities and a board that actually has the students and best interests at heart. We need a board that respects the dollars of our taxpayers. We need this community to show up, ask questions, and get out and vote because your children deserve the best, and that's what this is all supposed to be about. Now let's talk tier two. More than half of my membership is made up of tier two members, meaning they are dealing with some of the worst pension requirements that educators have ever faced in education. This group, who was known as our B schedule employees, has taken hit after hit. First the B schedule, then many got hit again with spousal exclusion, and now this. This group is a strong group of educators who leads this membership, and this board and this district should have a common interest to see reform come to our tier two employees. So I ask, what has this board done to be active in this challenge? Crickets. The IFT and IEA have joined forces for a week of action coming up on April 12th, and we will be loud and active. Tier two pensions are unfair and inequitable, and this board better be paying attention to this charge and doing everything they can to help fix this broken system. Otherwise, this board's gonna be on the hook for paying into social security, and all of us will too. If this community wants to see high qualified educators come and stay in this district, then you all should be active in this cause too, because the quality of your children's education depends on it. So I sure hope we start having serious conversations about what you all are doing to help fix this because you have a shared responsibility in seeing it gets fixed. Thank you, Valley View Council, for being here with me tonight. I ask them to come tonight because you need to see them. You need to lay your eyes on the people that make this whole operation go round, folks. The people whom I come up here and speak to when I step at this podium every month. You need to see who are actually making, who are actually affecting you are affecting, excuse me, when you make careless mistake after mistake. You need to see these wonderful men and women that I get to represent. These are the workers of the Valley View Council. We are teachers, paraprofessionals, 
nurses, security, deans, counselors, social workers, psychologists, SLPs, coordinators, maintenance, trainers, behavior specialists, EL providers, SRTs, and mechanics. And don't ask me what any of those acronyms mean either, because if you don't know what they mean, you don't deserve to be up here. You need to see who deserves all the credit for those lovely accolades you suck up, soak up. You need to see them. We are the ones that create memories for our students. We are the ones that get talked about at the dinner table. We are the ones that appear in their dreams, hopefully in a positive way, guys. <laughs> we are the ones that tie their shoes, wipe their tears, keep them safe, pick up their apples on the floor at lunch, buy snacks to feed them, and clean their wounds. We help support a lifelong journey of success, curiosity, and give them the tools they need to be successful on paths they choose. While you all may sit up here knowing with your own self-serving interests, I hope that thought brings you a little bit back down to reality because not one of our 15,000 students in this district is ever gonna remember you. But we, the Valley View Council, we get to wake up with those thoughts every day. They are the thoughts that make this work bearable. They are the thoughts that we fight through, that we fight our tears through, our frustration and our exhaustion day in and day out. Rest assured, Valley View Council, I know many things I've said here tonight are hard to fathom and they're probably hard to swallow. And just know that I need you all to know that you have a union leader that's always gonna put students and you above the rest of this dysfunction. Because as I said earlier, no one will stop or prevent me from doing the job in which I was elected to do. Thank you, Valley View Council, for showing up here tonight. Thank you to our community for being here and watching. And let's make this speech touch even more of our community than the last one did. All right, moving down the agenda. <laughs> Personnel Council report. Transportation report. Okay, old business before the board this evening. Any new business before the board this evening? Four year requests are, as always, on the website and through Mr. Blaney. Any announcements by the board from my right? Yes, I'd like, I have to say something. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we just celebrated some of us Easter, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I just pray and thank you for coming again, Local 604. Thank you for being here. Thank you for speaking. And thank you, and I will continue to ask for the acronyms, because it's not about me, it's not about you, it is about the community and the children. So with all the languages that we speak in this district, everybody do not know those acronyms. So yes, that is a pet peeve of mine, and I will continue to say it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Liz. But we're not... We, I'm not taking comments. comments. We're, we're not taking public comments. We've already done that. If you'd like to stick around, I'll talk to you after the meeting. Any announcements from the left? Any announcements by the administration? Dr. Wood? Motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Motion and second. All have a safe evening this evening.
And be careful. Thank you for your coming out this evening. Oh, I need a uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thanks.